So next up on our list of functions to find the derivative of it is going to be the inverse trigonometric functions, the inverse sine, inverse cosine, so forth. Uh, and the way we're going to approach this is the same way we approach finding the derivative of the logarithm. Right? The inverse of the inverse sine, for example, is the sine function. And I know what the derivative of the sine function is. So I'm going to use that same uh, derivative of the inverse formula that we used earlier to find these functions as well. All right, so I want to find the derivative of the arc sine, the inverse sine of x. And I'm going to do that using my formula for the derivative of the inverse. So we're going to start by letting f inverse of x be the inverse sine of x. We're just like we did with a, with a logarithm. F inverse has to be the thing that we're trying to find the derivative of, because that's how the formula works. It says the derivative of F inverse equals something. Okay, so this means F of X must be the sine of X. So F prime of X is the cosine of X. All right, so now let's use our formula, right? F inverse prime is 1 over f prime of f inverse. So that's 1 over f prime of the inverse sine of x, which is 1 over the cosine of the inverse sine of x. And that's not a very pretty formula, right? We're not going to stop there. Um, but look, remember, I'm going to flash back to your trigonometry class, right? And and do do a little conversion that you learned back there. Uh, that inverse sine of x, remember, that's an angle, right? The the range of the inverse trigonometric functions, they're all angles. So let's let's work with that. Let's let theta equal the inverse sine of x. Well, what what does that mean? That means that x is equal to the sine of theta. So let me draw that, right? I'm going to start with a right triangle, and I'm going to put my angle theta down here. And I know the sine of this angle is x. The sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. All right, well, you just do, do a little Pythagorean theorem, right? And this angle down here is the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so now let's go back to my derivative here. This is 1 over the cosine of theta, which is uh, the cosine of theta is the, this is the, uh, the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which is just 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's it. That's my derivative of the inverse sine. Let me write it here at the beginning. The derivative of the inverse sine of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so let's see how we can use this. Right, let's do some examples. Uh, I've got this function here, right? Uh, 2 arc sine of 3x. Okay, well I don't have a, I don't have a formula for the arc sine of 3x, but I have a function of a function, right? You heard the way I said that, the arc sine of 3x. And I've talked about this many times. Anywhere you hear that word of, you should immediately think this is a composition of function situation, which means I can use the chain rule, right? F prime of x will be 2 times, uh, as you get the 2 in there, 2 times 1 over the square root of 1 minus 3x squared times the derivative of 3x. Well, the derivative of 3x, that's 3. Multiply that 3 by the 2 that's out in front, and this becomes 6 over the square root of 1 minus 9 
x squared. And that's it. That's my derivative of this inverse sine function. Okay. So um, I, I'm not going to do all of these, right? Um, but let, let's take a look at one more. Let's think about what the derivative of the arc tangent, the inverse tangent is. All right, well, let's, let's start off the same way. F inverse of x will be the inverse tangent of x, which means f of x is the tangent of x, and f prime of x is the secant squared of x. All right, so let's go to our formula. F inverse prime is 1 over F prime of F inverse. All right, so that's 1 over F prime of the inverse tangent of X, which is 1 over secant squared times the inverse tangent of X. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a slightly different tack with this one. I'm going to pull out uh, one of our Pythagorean identities, right? Secant squared, I'll write it over here. Secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. All right, so that means this is 1 over 1 plus tangent squared of the inverse tangent of x and now you hopefully you see why I did it this way the tanverse the tangent of the inverse tangent is just the tangent so this is 1 over 1 plus x squared right the tangent excuse me the tangent of the inverse tangent of x is just x right the, their inverse functions they kind of cancel each other out and there's my derivative, right? There's the derivative of the inverse tangent. All right, so let me give you one, right? See if you, see if you can't work this one out. All right, well, I'm going to use my formula, right? And again, this is a chain rule situation, right? I've got this is kind of the inside function. This is the outside function. So f prime of x is 2 times 1 over 1 plus x squared plus 1 squared times the derivative of x squared plus 1. Well, the derivative of x squared plus 1, that's 2x, times this 2 that I already have out in front. This is 4x over 1 plus, let's go ahead and multiply this out. This is x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. So this is 4x over x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 2. And that's it. That's my derivative, right, of this, of the f of x. All right, so here I have all of these, right? Obviously, there's six inverse trigonometric functions. Each one has its own inverse. Uh, each one has its own derivative, and I've got them all written out here. Now, if it were me, if you were in my class, uh, I would not require you to memorize all six of these. These are, are frankly, a little on the obscure side. Uh, they, they come up rarely, uh, and is, especially in today's Internet age. Uh, there, there, are, there are some things you do need to know. I'm not, I'm not completely opposed to memorizing things. In order to be creative you need to have facts in your head uh, that, you, that you can build on and combine and do interesting things with um, so you, you do need to have a certain base of knowledge but these I think are just a little out there um, and again in, in the internet age things are so easy to look up uh, I would not require people to memorize this other people may feel differently um, but I do want to talk about these for just a minute because this is how you'll see these written if you look up tables of derivatives um, you'll see them. It's not the arc sine of x; it's the arc sine of u. For example, this u is a function of x. So you see, this is why 
we have this du dx here on the outside and you'll see that that's at the end of every one of these that's the chain rule part right that's the chain rule so um, if we look at the uh, the arc tangent one for example the example we just did the u was x squared plus one and what did I do I put x squared plus one in here for you and then I multiplied by the derivative of x squared plus one that's 2x and there was my derivative right that's all this formula is saying all these formulas are saying by using u's instead of x's okay so where are we going next we are we are almost done um, with uh, th with our base functions right we've covered um, polynomials we've covered trig functions now we have the inverse trig functions and we've done exponential and logarithmic functions so we're, we're really almost there uh, excuse me th th this is uh, we're almost there we do have one left to go uh, we have to talk about um, what are called hyperbolic trig functions and that's what we'll be doing in the next lecture.